guys, welcome to the Funny Thing Is podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Birch, where every week I bring to you a guest who shares an event that changed their life, the medicine that helped them heal, and the funniest thing they learned along the way. Today is no exception. I want to introduce to you my good friend, Matt Gudernatch, who you've seen on all national commercials, a terrific actor. Let's give him a round of applause. Yay. Yay. Um, I was trying to think of how we first met. Yeah. Like 10 years ago? Uh, about 10 years ago, and it involved so much making out. You were my first on-screen kiss. Yes. Okay, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yes. Um, what it was, was it? It was a horror comedy. A horror comedy pilot. Okay. That uh, won New York Television Festival pilot Thank you. competition. Thank you. And you and I made out and broke a bunch of stuff in a garage. Didn't I turn into a zombie yes. in the middle of the making out? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And was your girlfriend, now wife, present <laughs> during the entire she thing? She was for the entire shoot. Yes. Yeah. And I remember that was the first time she saw me like making out with other people. Yeah, that was first hard. First of many. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm a very good man. Um, <laughs> but yeah, she uh, yeah, she was like, oh, that's something I don't need to see anymore. That's I don't want to be on set for that. From now on, when yeah. you're doing those days, which I have almost none of, because yeah. um, I don't play a lot of romantic leads, yeah. believe it or okay, not. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I don't believe that. It's more like guy with skin conditions. <laughs> the eczema. Things of that Pharmaceutical nature. Pharmaceutical eczema cream. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, I remember she did our makeup too, right? Yeah. So she was doing my makeup and she's like, I'm his girlfriend. And I was like, oh. <laughs> Oh, fun. Yeah. Fun, 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 yeah, fun. Yeah. My, my call sheet just says making out for the entire day. So, it was yeah, fun. So, yeah. That was a fun shoot, man. That was a fun shoot. I had a blast. Yeah. Um, so thank you for doing the podcast. No, it's great. So here's my question. What event in your life changed everything for you? Sure. So uh, when I was 14, uh, my mom passed away of cardiomyopathy. Okay. Uh, yeah, oh which God. we knew she had, but was like also very sudden when it happened. Like we thought she was doing better. Okay. It was like came home from school one day and that was that she passed away at home do you have siblings yeah i do i have a, an older sister and a, and a, a significantly older brother who was okay. he was out of the house at that point so it was just my sister and me and my dad at that point okay was anybody with her uh no <sighs> no so she was she was alone um i'm very lucky i was supposed to go home and get my tennis racket right after school and i said you know what I'll borrow somebody else on the team's racket. And that is the only reason I wasn't the first one home after it happened. Who was? My dad. Oh, okay, that's better. Yeah. Oh, it's, my God. Uh, yeah. It's still terrible. Sucks still for Still terrible. Him. Yeah. Uh, can't imagine that's uh, was on his uh, bucket list. No. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, my. So what is, so how long did you know that she had it? So she got diagnosed when I was probably nine. It was like five or six years. Right. So um, eight or nine. And I remember at the beginning, it was kind of like, oh, hey, like, she, there's something going on with her heart. She's not going to be able to, like, run or, you know, she might be short of breath. And um, cardiomyopathy is weird because you don't look any different. You don't, you know. So we had, yeah. like, a handicap sticker, and we used to have people, like, coming at us when we would park Yeah, what's wrong with you? You look stuff. fine. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it was, like, totally kind of normal. We just sort of knew in general there was a thing going on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, then it happened pretty suddenly. That's crazy. Yeah. And then you ha do you have it? Is it genetic? So is it... it is. We found out in the last like yeah, like four months ago that it it was genetic. Uh, so that's good. We went my whole life thinking it was just a, a random, random horrible thing, um, but significantly worse actually. Um, so yeah, I do have the gene. Um, it is one of those genes that like pretty. Like, it's like a lock, you know? Yeah. It's not one of those of like, oh, you might. might. It feels it's... like, follows familial patterns. And okay. it's like, Do my you... uncle, my mom, oh. probably my grandfather, because he died young, but it was like before they had medicine. I mean, they knew really. it. Before they, they knew it. But yeah. They, yeah. Um, what were they, were they doing anything to treat her? Or was it like she just needed to take it so easy? So cardiomyopathy is one of these rare, like, uh, heart diseases on the heart disease spectrum of like, there's not much you can do. I right. mean, like, don't. You don't want to be in bad health, but it's not even somewhere you can, like, so, like, I can't, like, give up cheeseburgers or bacon and then right. be, like, good. Yeah, right. So, right. it's, uh, no, it's kind of, like, you get checked a lot. I have to go into to get echocardiograms twice a year yeah. now. And, uh, no, there was, like, no medicine at all. There is medicine now, but when she was around, there was, there was nothing. no medicine. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was, it was brutal. And do you, so you got tested for the gene. So I recently got tested for the gene. And was then, it just, was that random or was it because um, you had a symptom or something? No, it was, it was because they kind of found this definitive link. 
Okay. And it was like, oh, so my brother and sister and I were like, we should, we should get tested. Mm-hmm. And uh, jackpot. They didn't get it? it? No. I, I don't know. I don't know whose story I can tell in that way. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got so it. Yeah. I we got some HIPAA, say, HIPAA violations. Sure. We're not going to do some HIPAA violations. I have it. And, okay. uh, you know, I have two girls. So then it was immediately testing them. Yeah. One of my girls has it. So, Aww. yeah. But the hope is by that point. There's going to be so much. Yeah, like, even there's going to be so much. It's yeah. so different than what my mom had. Like, there's, and knowing early is important because it's one of those things. So, right. you know, it's it's good. It's yeah. great. It's, okay. It's a positive thing that I have it. It's a positive <laughs> thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're, kids, disease. now we know. Now we know. Yeah, 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 yeah great. Yeah, yeah. Great, great, great. Yeah. What is it, how is that, because that, you said that happened in the last year that you discovered it yeah. with you and your daughter. Yeah. What does that do to the family union? It was, uh... Shakes it up, shakes things up a little yeah. bit, you know? Um, it was... Because you guys are young, I, you know what I mean? Young. I'm very lucky, I have a, it's, you know her, she's, I have a An very incredible, supportive, incredible wonderful woman. wife. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was immediately, she bought me a treadmill immediately. Okay, she was got like, it. a treadmill now. <laughs> bought, done. Uh, so you can be in good shape, which is not working. Um, <laughs> Shut up. But uh, she, she kind of dove in as she does, and um, a lot of it is just staying ahead of it like the medicine to keep it the medicine to keep yourself steady is right. a lot better than the medicine to bring you back up right so like there's this whole it's so lame it's this whole thing called ejection fraction and that's like how they measure your heart 60 yeah. to 70 is normal 50 to 60 is low normal when they caught my mom's it was in the teens holy yeah okay so like her heart was just not working yeah and so mine is still, i'm at 65 okay like i'm good okay and follows familial patterns so like all my mom and family was like mid 40s okay. so i think i have a couple years yeah uh but it was, it's it's coming up yeah it's, 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 but with medicine and you staying healthy and like being aware of it yeah yeah, yeah. we can keep it steady for a while okay so what was it i never thought i'd ask this but sure. what was it like losing a parent at 14 years old uh weird yeah. uh you know tragic of obviously course. um i also like a little a, a little asterisk addendum in there is that i did not go through puberty until college okay uh, like definitively did not go through puberty okay. until college like i was 18 when i when i would you into, look like when i went into um senior junior year of, co- of high school yeah i was four foot eleven yeah no I, way i picture myself at my junior prom and my date who's like five five is like towering so much taller than me um and then going into senior year i was five three and like just like people used to call the house and i would answer and they'd be like hey sarah um <laughs> you know like i never got confused for my dad i routinely got confused for my sister okay on the phone, okay uh which doesn't do a ton for your self-esteem right right I right i would say which is when you need it most. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So like being decidedly the smallest person I knew. Right. Uh, with a very boyish face and figure. Right. And then also being the kid in a small town whose mom died. Okay. It was it was loaded, you know? You had everything lot. coming at it you. It was a lot. I you were built for it. comedy. You yeah, were yeah, built yeah. for it. Yeah, I wasn't built for love. <laughs> That's for sure. Oh, God. I was built for friendship with a lot of women. Um, oh god so that was great yeah no it was weird because like you know teenagers are gross yeah and weird yeah and like it's a terrible time it's a terrible time yeah like if you have two alive parents it's yeah. a really weird time yeah but like going through this like devastating family altering life altering ptsd inducing thing and also being like wow i want to play mario kart and jerk off and that's all I want to do today. That's all I want to do every day. That's on my schedule. That's on my planner. I want to meet up with planner. my friends. Then I want to be alone for an hour. <laughs> and then I want to meet up with my friends again. <laughs> and all while all this is happening, I'm the saddest I've ever been in a, in a deep oh, depression that I can't possibly understand God. at 14 years old. Uh, See, so yeah, it wasn't it wasn't great. Yeah. Uh, you know. <laughs> How did you? When did you start to feel, or did you start to feel any kind of like reprieve from it? Or coming out of it. Oh man, um, honestly, probably college. Like I'm yeah. from a really small town. Right. Like, like truly, I think there were like three stoplights in my town. Okay. Um, like that's in Connecticut. In Connecticut, okay. little tiny farm town in Connecticut near Yukon. Okay. And uh, yeah, I so like it also was in, it's inescapable there. Like yeah. I'm the kid whose mom died. Like right. that's that's what it was. What everybody talks about. Um, yeah. so it was like 
that and then like we had we did i see everything's so hazy because i was so young and <laughs> suffering a horrible ptsd that i didn't understand but like i remember we had to do family therapy right away i don't like i for a long time, I told people it was court mandated, but that doesn't sound right. Yeah, what, they, what, I, I what judge like would a, come like in town? <laughs> appellate judge would be like, "Hey, you guys, you your need mom this. died. You need the government. Your to whole step family in. has to go to court, oh, or your God. dad's going to jail." Uh, <laughs> which is what I uh, genuinely what I thought had happened. Right. And I like I, that's Jeff. I haven't even asked my dad, but that's definitely not true. Yeah. But I told people that for years. I was like, "Yeah, yeah we did court appointed yeah. therapy." Yeah. Um, <laughs> people are like, "Ow!" As if, as if my dad killed my mom. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> which he didn't. Which. <laughs> um, it was a horrible disease. Uh, but yeah, so we did that, and that was like like the worst thing I can imagine is after your mom dies. Uh, being in a room alone with a 16-year-old girl, because that was what age my sister was, who was, like, hurting. And, yeah, we didn't, we did, like, one or two sessions, and it was like, oh, this is worse. Yeah. You should not know what, and if you, we don't, I don't need to know what you think. Yeah. I don't want you to know what I think. I want to never oh, it talk about worse, it for really. a little bit. it was worse, really. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, like, that, and then, you know, like, the whole, like, real quiet house thing for a mm -hmm. long time. And then, uh, yeah, I remember, like, you would have waves of kind of coming out of it and then you'd be like, oh yeah, no, my mom's dead. Like genuinely, like you'd be at basketball practice and you'd be like taking jump shots and you'd be like, oh nice, like I hit a jump shot. Oh, my mom's dead. Oh my God. My mom's hit. always going to be dead. <laughs> like from oh. here on forward, there is no me and my mom. Yeah. So it, I, I didn't come out of it for a long time and then I mean, honestly, I, I'm not out of it now. <laughs> yeah. But. Well, it's so brutal. And it's one of those things, like, I think, of, especially now that we're parents. Yeah. I have never thought, I have never really worried about death. I don't know why. I just never have. I, I, I have, like, a spiritual thing, and I think, like, there's energy, and I, you know, have close connections with people that, you know, I've been there when they've passed. Yeah. But once I had my daughter, holy cow. Yeah. Then you start to go, what would happen? Yeah. And you're, cause you're responsible for somebody else. Yeah. That's the part where I'm like, I can't stop thinking about it. And it's also this thing that I started realizing then too, is like, I started to pity my mom too. Yeah. Like it, it had always been this very sort of selfish, uh, thing, yeah. which I think it should be like a 14 year old. Absolutely. But like having kids like missing out on a minute of I their know. lives, like that really, I was like, Oh, this, she I missed mean, it. Yeah. yeah, this sucks for me, but like, man, she would have loved like it. she wanted to be at all those things that I needed her to be at too, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So that was really weird. Yeah. Having kids like that really throws some gasoline on the fire. Yeah, because you've like I say, you know, I I haven't really been afraid of death. I imagine you in that situation probably have. No. I, Did it's that... funny. Like I don't know. I probably just and this is like something I've unpacked in years of therapy. Yeah. But like I I think I genuinely compartmentalized yeah. in such a way, such an extreme way that to this day, like devastating news i'm kind of like okay yeah we got that's what we got yeah gotta moving power on through. <laughs> like, power through yeah uh and i think that's just something like i and that's like i did grief groups for a little bit that were not really my thing but i know a lot of like children of loss are like oh yeah no we know how bad it can be yeah so when a bad things happen it's like yeah yeah that's that's what happens yeah bad things happen you yeah know, like, and then there's like a survival thing you're just like yeah. oh, it's just surviving we don't have to thrive all the time yeah right now it's survival mode exactly yeah so yeah i put my head down but yeah college i came out of it because i didn't tell anybody i i was like i'm not gonna be the kid whose mom died oh college. so nobody you see it didn't have to get I the had, attention like, probably six or eight really close friends who knew because they would like my dad would come up and be like where's your mom uh, yeah. and i was like oh died um, but for everybody else, and I went to, co I was in college to, to date myself 2003 to 2007, which was a real glory time for Yo Mama jokes. Okay. Like I do 2000s. remember. Yes. There was a whole show, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 And MTV. So, yeah. Like being the kid whose mom died that no one knew whose mom died and just like constantly oh, no. <laughs> and being like, okay, I can handle this. I don't, I still don't want them to know, but having like some guy you barely like being like, yo, mama's a bitch. Like I <laughs> fucked her last night. And I'm like, oh man, <laughs> you have no idea, uh, bro. <laughs> can you, oh, I want to tell you so bad. Oh God. I did. I had one friend. This is funny. My buddy Jacob, who I'm still really close with. Mm -hmm. We were, he was one guy I decided to let in on the, the secret because we had gotten pretty close freshman year. And, uh, and he like starts going in on yo mom and stuff like that. And I was like, hey man, I gotta tell you. Um, like my mom my mom died. Turns out that's also a bit people were doing, you know, oh, to like no. fuck with people. And so he was like, 
oh, she did? Did she die when I fucked her to death? <laughs> and I was like, mm? mm-hmm. What? Uh, I was like, bud, bud, she she died. And he's like, <laughs> like, okay. kept dude. going. And I was like, oh, okay. <sighs> like, dude. Like, cardiomyopathy. <laughs> like, cardi- like, I started, my... like, being specific about it. And he was, like, like bright red. All the color left his face. And he's like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And I was like, no, you didn't know. I, I understand. But, yeah, that was, like, the first time that I was like, okay, I have to tell some people. Yeah. And that was, like, midway through freshman year. Because I was like, it's too loaded for me to just have all of my good friends yeah. <laughs> think that I'm, like, yeah, just skipping along. Um, but, yeah, that was when – so college was just, like, I was, like – I went by Marty. I had a different name in college. To this day, all my friends at, from school call me Marty. Teachers called me Marty. I mean, like, I went by Nikki, which – Nicole. Which like so that translates. <laughs> so Marty, okay. Yeah. Okay. I just went by I, – well, like, I was, like, I have a different name, and I have two parents. And, and I'm that's ready it. for the world. Okay. <laughs> and this is – we're surviving. Yeah, we're surviving. Yeah. 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 That's who, I had um, a sorority sister – whose dad passed away from a brain tumor. And again, I didn't know at the beginning. And so no yo mama jokes, but I would always be like, that's what your dad said. And then she told me and I felt like the biggest piece. And yeah. today we're still really good friends. And she always tells people, cause it was, I think he p- had passed two years before that. Mm. So it was recent. And so she would always ask me to do like the your dad stuff. So it would seem normal. Oh. Which was interesting, yeah. and then people just thought I was a huge bitch well, because I'd be like, "That's what your like... dad said," and they're like, "Your dad died." And she'd, she'd be like, "That's hilarious." <laughs> He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Yeah, it was yeah, a no. fun joke. But um, you just like you want to be normal, like I, yeah. you know, like I did. There was never truly in that whole time. There was never like a a time where somebody told a you mama joke and I was like in tears. Right. You know, because I was like, "This is this." Is, yeah. They're not. It's I don't think they're talking about my dead mom. <laughs> I don't think it's about that. Yeah, yeah. I think it's about something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's a joke. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like wanting to be normal. Yeah. Especially after, like, again, being the kid. Like, that's... I would say I was known for that more than anything. Okay. In my town. Right. And that's That's a hard sucks. thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's also, awful. proof I was not very good at other stuff. So- <laughs> <laughs> a little light in the world on fire in other You're ways. like, uh, great basketball player. And his mom passed away. Yeah. You're yeah. like, no, no, just Nope, nope. Just Barely the made the team. Barely. There it Doing is. Doing a lot of water. Yeah. Water breaks. Well, 4'11". Yeah. I didn't have a chance. That's hard. I didn't have a chance. Yeah. Also, you need to send me a photo of that. Cause yeah, I, I will. Because I absolutely post that. Yeah. It's um, it so small. So, okay. So, you started to come out of it. Mm-hmm. it I mean, as much as one can. In yeah. the college years. Yeah. And, and I saw my first therapist there in college. How was that? Because uh, now it's not family therapy. Yeah, that was not good. Not good not either. Good. So no. I have to, I've heard so many stories about bad therapy. Yeah, I think it's a. I think there's tons. Yeah. And I, well, I want to say I have a great therapist now. So do I. And I've been in long, I've been in two great therapist relationships. The one I have now I love and the one I had before her I also really enjoyed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've had so many bad therapist yeah uh, but i think it's like doctors too you know like get back doctors yeah, it's, everything. it's even it's like, like dating it's like you, sometimes yeah, they're just not a good fit with yeah. it it's like and i'm a very not like um i'm a very not like procedural or like homework you know some therapists do homework right which really works for some people mm, i am I like uh i just want to talk yeah and like i want you to kind of be like oh yeah that's interesting here's maybe why you're thinking that i don't want more than that right i don't want to like sit quietly and have them be like it's time for you it's I'm not here to speak. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. You have to have some That's input. Not my thing. Yeah, mine's like, I'll feel like I've filled up a balloon, and then every now and then when I do therapy, I'm letting some of that air out, mm. and I can just like let it out. Yeah, I like and that. And I just want, and if every now and then she'll give me an aha moment where she's like, well, that tracks back to your dad's relationship with his parents. And I was like, what? Like something like <laughs> yeah, that. And you're yeah. like, oh, yeah. great. But yeah. it's not an hour of those, and it's not an hour of silence either. Right. Yeah. Yes. The, like, they need to make points. Yeah. But, yeah, the, my one in college was very much like, we need to dig into this. And I was like, I, you might even be right, but no. Yeah. I won't do that. Yeah. I am, oops, sorry, I'm 19, and I am pretending I have two parents at college, and I don't want to dig into this yeah. in any way. Yeah. I want to assume I never have to deal with it and hope my life will be happy. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it's spoiler alert. Yeah. It didn't work great. But, uh, yeah, so I saw a therapist there and then swore off therapy for a while. Right. After one like, bad experience, people usually swear it off yeah. for a while or a lifetime. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. So then after that, when do you move to Boston, L.A.? So that was, I went to school in Boston. Okay. And then, uh... 
that summer, the summer after graduation, I, I had done this like video thing and I had a professor who ended up marrying my wife and me. I'm like so close with him. He, oh. I consider him like a father figure, a second father figure. And um, Warren, he was basically like, hey, don't go do something normal. You're really funny. Go move to New York or LA and do something. And I was like, that's weird. That's yeah. not even a career. Like yeah. that's yeah. the imagination. Yeah. Um, what was he a professor of? Well, so he did a lot of like health study stuff. Okay, at so school, not like drama. But he did no, not drama. But he had a senior course called Creative Process that I took as a hundred percent a jack off course. Like I was <laughs> like, I don't want to do anything. Yeah. I'm gonna do Creative Process yeah. and like fuck it. Yeah. Um, whatever. And like every class, it was like do something creative. And I remember the first like three or four weeks being like, this poor man <laughs> thinks he's reaching us students Deeply. and i am like building a fucking birdhouse <laughs> and being like here's this dumbass fucking birdhouse thanks for the a you old bitch yeah and then like and he'll love this and because he'll he'll listen to it immediately and i like truly was like god I, this is the best decision i ever made yeah. i am like just sailing my way to graduation and then like halfway through he was like all right and like creative something blah 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 He's like, I want you to write a book on your story, and I like went and I like went up to him and I was like, um, I don't know if I want to like, can I just do something else? And he's like, Well, you can do whatever you want. It's creative, but like, I think you should do your story. And I was like, Well, I don't tell anybody this, but like, my mom died. And he was like, Let's go to lunch. And I cried at lunch with this man, Aww. and and he was like, I think you should write this book. And I wrote like half of it and did have to give up. It was like too much at that point. Right. And I gave up. And also, I don't think it was very good because mm -hmm. I was. 20 right. and uh dumb right um but i wrote this thing and i was like oh man i do i really like this and from there on i was like so excited for this class like every time you say do something creative i'm like i'm gonna pick a new thing i'm gonna shoot a video with my friends like camcorder because we didn't even have fucking phones at that yep. point yeah you know, yep. at an lg 4400 yeah and uh and so like we did that and anyway that summer i applied to to grad school in boston for like a global advertising program and uh moved to new york in with my aunt and i was like i'm just gonna go i started doing like ucb right and stand up and stuff and i found out i didn't get into that program which i had like i had like created my own commercials for i had like done these You've i was like everything. it was like the first thing i had ever taken seriously right like i coasted my whole life and i was like no like this is Passionate. i'm creative and this is this thing and i was like crushed and i was like well fuck it i'm actually enjoying doing this I'm going to, like, move back to Boston for a little bit, save up some money, and then go to L.A. And I uh, started performing. I met this really amazing um, stand-up, Jessica Curson, Jesse mm -hmm. K., who still does a lot of mm -hmm. great stuff in New York. And she was like, hey, you're young, but you're funny, but you're bad at what you do right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she was like, come here every Thursday at 10, and I'll give you five minutes. God and, like, bless her. You don't her. need to do a burner. You don't need Jessica. to do the bullshit. Yeah. God, she's amazing. Started doing that, got some confidence. Still was terrible. Yeah. But, like, had moments. Right. And uh, then the school called Emerson College called and was like, we fucked up your application. You, you got in. And I was Shut like. Shut up. I swear to God. Dude. And I, and I was like, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Um, what are the chances like that that ever, the even if now. they fuck it up, the chances of them admitting it and yeah. calling you? Yeah. Dude. Okay. And so this is, like, end of the summer. And I was like, oh. And they're like, yes, we need. It's like two, two and a half weeks the program starts. And I was like, oh, shit. Um, I was like, I kind of like what I'm, I'm doing. Can I defer for a year? And it was like this real, it was like 15 spots, you know. And they were yeah. like, we don't do, you can reapply next year, but like it would have to be a new application, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, can I have some time? They're like, you have three days. Okay. And so I'm like in New York at my aunt's house, and I drive back up to Connecticut to, to talk to my dad about it because um, he's my buddy. And I was like you know, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, go to school. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's only one answer here. Yeah. Go to school. And I was like, okay, I think instead I'm just going to uh, move to Los Angeles <laughs> um, <laughs> and blow up my entire life and work on Craigslist for a little bit. Um, and so I did that and I turned it down. Okay. I met, I met Jen in Boston when I was like quickly uh, doing some thing. And then, yeah, moved out here. The rest is history. Yes. And she followed. She soon. followed. She, like, she Pretty it was soon? about a year. Okay. We actually broke up when I left because okay. I was like, we had just. She was twenty. I was twenty four. Yeah. yeah. I was like, we don't need to do this. Right. You're great. You're also like, 
in school in a town in Boston that you never want to leave. Yeah. And I want to leave forever. Yeah. Um, and so we kind of kept in touch, but we, we like broke it off. And then, uh, she did come out and visit for like a weekend and we we're like, Oh, this is great. But like, you know, you're still doing your thing. I'm doing my thing. And then she got an internship out here like a year in and was like, or eight or 10 months in to me being out here. And she was like, I got this internship. We don't need to hang out. I totally get it. Like, I just want you to know, which is bullshit. She followed me out here. Like, yeah. Hun- yeah. No person. So is, why would you like, want to go to LA? Internship right. In LA? Right. Right. Yeah, right. 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 But she was like, you don't need to hang out. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And so <laughs> like the second or third night she was here, she slept over and we have lived together since that. Day. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I didn't she know never that. Left. Okay. She never left. I love that. Now you have two beautiful kids. We didn't even call each other boyfriend and girlfriend for like a year and a half because it was like, we're like hooking up and living together. And then it was like, <laughs> We're oh, like roommates. That we're like sex. deeply committed to each other now. <laughs> um, so yeah, two kids. I love it's that. All it did. Yeah. What would you say was the uh, medicine that helped you the most? So it, it was finally therapy and okay. finding like a therapist that I liked. And actually, um, that professor, Warren Dolan, was a big proponent yeah. of me getting into it. And he flew out here. Jen and I had been together for maybe three or four years at this point. And he flew out and stayed with us for a week. And uh, he and I were hiking Runyon Canyon, as you do in Los Angeles. Yeah, absolutely. And he was talking to me about I had this I had this very this thing in my head that like my edge or like my comedy came from my sadness Mm -hmm. and my anger and Mm -hmm. shit like that which by the way for anybody listening like the comedy I do is like guys who live in bathtubs and like I wrote a song about having sex with an inchworm like not necessarily I'm not doing (laughs) but I'm not doing this isn't breaking bad (laughs) that I'm like I need my edge to like successfully write this the song one where you're giving where you're giving the tour of Idlewild oh yeah as the like my favorite I appreciate and it's that. so specific and so <laughs> like the amount of time like you're the kind of comedy that makes me like something will happen and then I want to throw my phone laughing <laughs> so hard because I'm like what like you don't see it coming like you can kind of see okay there's going to be something happening and then whatever is happening would never have been in your brain. I try to keep it weird. It's so I try weird to go with and my so first good. Instinct every time, which does it doesn't always lead to good things, but I, I think it leads to very specific things. It's so good. And so I like that. But yeah, I like again, like imagine that video being like, I need to be depressed to make that video. Right. Like, what an idiot. I yeah. Was. Yeah. So, but I had this thing. I was like, I don't. I'm not gonna do. I'm not gonna treat this because yeah. like this anger, this fuels me. Heartache, like yeah, fuels me. And he and I were out hiking. And he was like, when are you going to propose to that girl? And keep in mind, he told me to break up with my college girlfriend. I hope she doesn't listen to this because I never told her this. But he told me to break. I was in a five-year relationship. Whoa, um, like okay. Like college and then two years after. Okay. And when I was like 22, he and I went to lunch. And he was like, break up with her. She's not perfect for you. And you deserve that. And break up with her. Do it right now. Oh, I hope she's And listening. go live a different life. And I was like, oh. She like was like, didn't want me to be an actor. Didn't want me to move to New York uh, at the time. Or, nine like, to five. she didn't want me to. It was more like whoa, this is way different than all the stuff we had kind of signed up for together. Right. Um, but yeah, so he was like, why have you not proposed to this perfect girl living at your house? Yeah. Uh, and I was like, you know, I don't know. Like, I have so much anger and I'm so depressed. And like, I don't want, I don't want my life to get stable and lose that. And he was like, you fucking moron. <laughs> <laughs> like, you are sprinting away from happiness because you are so used to being depressed. There's so many comedians that are like that, too, though. Yeah. That that's where they think that they, they get their fuel. Don't have... And a lot of them, some of them do. I'm not going to say some of them don't. For but... sure. And I think, like, having a guy that can sit you down and be like, you're a fucking moron. Yeah. Like, if you really think that's the only reason you're funny, then you're not very funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're not very talented yeah. if that's where your talent's coming from. That's true. Like, what, are you going to go to kill your dad if you get better? Like, yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he... And he was like, you got to go to therapy, man. You got to do it. And I told him I hated therapy and that it was always wrong. And he was like, you said I'm at the right therapist. Yeah. So I. I love this guy. Went, he's he's like an most, angel in your life. I love it. The most amazing guy. Um, truly. Like the yeah. most, he's like changed. I know three people. Casey. Yeah. I'm Ryan Gall. Yeah. They, they both took his class. Oh, really? Yeah. He, oh, my God. He married Ryan and his wife. <gasps> like he is like a a guardian angel of, of Boston kids. He's amazing. Yes. And. uh yeah, so when he left, oh, I, but I... We're keeping that in. Yeah, yeah, keeping keep that. that in. Did I pull that off? No, just, just Oh, it's it, I see. It's, there we go. That's the there deal. There we go. Okay. Sorry, That's good. good. Sorry, listener. <laughs> uh, I knocked over a thing off the wall. Um, but he, uh, 
yeah, so I, then I started getting serious about therapy. And okay. I was like, I gotta, I gotta do this. I, I went through like two right away, but I was like in this thing where I'm like, I'm gonna fight the right one. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna actually like work at it this time. And then how I found, were those? How were the first two? The first two were like fine, but not a right fit. Like right. it was very, again, like I, like you know, like I'm a very in touch. Like I have two daughters. I'm very in touch with my feelings. I cry all the time. I have yeah. no problem with that. But I'm also like I'm a comedian, and when things get too serious, I'm like I just. This isn't how I want to do this. Yeah, you gotta break I, it up. I, like I, I'm fine talking about how horrible this pain was. I don't want it to be to feel like I'm back at the funeral. Yeah. And it was a lot of that. Yeah. Um, and so it was kind of like after a couple of weeks, it was like, hey, I don't think this is the right fit. And they were like, yeah, totally. You know, go. I, great. Good luck. They were both great. They just weren't the right fit. And then the third one, he was like. Uh, really nice and really loose and just kind of gave me space. And a lot of it is just getting space to be like, oh, no, I have a lot of fucked up things in my life because I'm holding on to this tragedy and, like, making it my personality. Yeah. So uh, it was a lot of realizing that and going and just doing a lot of, like, it sounds so stupid once you're past it. Like, but you just have, like, it, you have to tell yourself that you're like it, you should be happy. Yeah. Like you should have a happy life. Yeah. If you can. Yeah. You know. It should be a goal. Yeah. Most people can, I think. Yeah. You know, you can, you can, and uh, not wanting it sounds insane. Yeah. But like I, I was like I don't want it. I don't want that's like stable. Yeah. I don't want the staple happy right. life. I want to like be like screaming at the at the gods and you yeah. know like yeah. And again, I'm I'm making the weirdest alt comedy while i do this not like i'm tapping into it because i'm doing right. all this <laughs> right. interesting yeah dark material it's like no i need to be unhappy so that i can go to outback yeah and... i there's another thing like there's certain comedians and they've had like a great like they're doing like 30 years of comedy 40 years of, they're still doing netflix specials they're killing it and then my fear was like if i don't get if i keep talking about my daddy issues and slutting around and dating in la like Am I going to be talking about that in my 60s? Like, am I going to be up there telling dick jokes in my 60s? Like, it's got to evolve, right? It can't. And some people, it is the same. They've just gotten sharper or different material. I was going to say, you can evolve the joke. You could evolve the joke. (laughs) But I was like, oh, and then when I looked down that tunnel, because it was after I found out I was pregnant, and I was like, this is going to ruin everything. I'm about to, my career's about to take off. (laughs) This is going to ruin everything. And then I was, and then somebody said, what are you going to do? Tell dick jokes when you're 60? And I was like, and I thought of me, like, oddly in a cardigan still being like so i was on tinder and this guy and i'm like telling the same joke i did 30 years ago and i'm yeah, like oh i'll yeah. have the kid i'll have the kid i'll at least get just different have, ma- have the just, just have, have a kid it. for more material that goes for everybody listening yeah just have, have a kid, kid for more material it lets you grow in your material <laughs> you're gonna be so poor anyway <laughs> um the other thing i was gonna ask is when you had your two kids did having them heal especially probably the first one i mean I would imagine. Did any of that heal any of the trauma from previously? You know, heal is maybe not the right word, but it does, as you know, also. Like, it, it's a lot more reason to be happy. Yeah. You know, like, I, there's... And I, I had gotten to a pretty good place through a lot of therapy, but, like, there's still part of me that can ruin a week for myself yeah. if I want to. Yeah, same self-destruct. Yeah, yeah. realizing that I'm not a good dad when I do that... Yeah is like that's that's enough yeah like oh my god so same you know yeah. it's like i can ruin my own week i can't ruin these two girls yeah. weeks yeah that sucks man yeah there was a time where i still tried to party one night and i had a babysitter and i was like we're gonna be fine and i had too much drink and i ubered home i did all the responsible things and i was like i still got to have a girl's night but it was like with girls that i don't have anything in common with anymore yeah and i was trying to live the life i'd lived like previously and uh she slept through the night. It wasn't like one of those things where, like, what if she gets up and needs to go to the ambulance? Didn't even <laughs> yeah. think about that. Like, needs to go to the hospital. And I woke up the next morning with a hangover getting her breakfast. And I was like, oh, I oh. don't do this anymore. No, no, I just no. don't. I'm not. She wants to, she wants to connect. I'm so disconnected. Mm-hmm. And also she wants to know why mommy's sick yeah. and why I don't feel well. And I'm like. Oh, because I created it myself. Yeah, I like I'm trying myself to. Last I'm night. trying to. Yeah, I poison myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to stay healthy, like because I'm an older mom, right? I had her later, so I'm trying to just stay enough to be active with her, so we can play and go running and do stuff. And here I am, just injecting poison. Oh yeah, you know? the, your first hangover with a baby. You're is, like, I'm done. Yeah, yeah. hopefully, life changing. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, or, or or you deep dive or, down to it further. Who knows? Who knows? There's people. They, there's people. There's people. They're they're on their journey. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So with that, can I ask what the? Do you have anything else to share before I move on to the funniest thing? No, no. I I feel like I've shared. Okay. What do open you? Open book. Th I mean, this is like because I, I you know I've had very few friends that have had parents die that young, and I just don't know how you acclimate to especially if it's your mom man yeah yeah that's a tough it's like tough especially a little boy and his mom like yeah, yeah. And we were really close yeah but like the thing i tell people and like not to make it too sad on a comedy podcast or not even sad but like yeah. genuinely she was the type of mom i take 14 years with oh you know what i mean yeah like she was yeah and like i see would i take 100 years yes yeah but like yeah i'd, I'd sign up for it again yeah what was the you did a one-man show i did a one-man show yeah and it was, it was called, about this? Uh, yeah, my mom died when I was 14, a comedy. And mm -hmm. it was it was literally about being a 14-year-old who did not have any pubic hair and was mistaken for his sister. And even one time I wore her jeans to school on accident, and they fit me, like, great. Oh, okay, um, okay. You know, it was a lot. And, yeah. uh, and, like, I was trying to get girls to date me, and they were also like, you look like a, a Teddy Ruxpin doll. I don't <laughs> want to oh, ever no. be around Teddy you sexually Ruxpin. in any way. <laughs> Um, like I would have, yeah, like I was like a kid who was like in a pinwheel hat and like yes. held a big lollipop. Oh. Like that's what I looked like. With bobby socks. And I was like, oh. who wants to go fuck? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> also, I can't do it yet. I can, I can get my little tiny erections and hope for the best, but I can't do any of the rest of it because I'm not there yet. And I won't be there for several years. Had I known... I probably would have killed myself <laughs> had I been that 14-year-old at home. Being like, like, my mom just died, but at least I'll go through puberty in the next year or two. Oh. Wrong. 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 Way wrong. Did not happen. Way wrong. Now, did your brother go through it normal? I think so. Or was he he was, delayed he's like 12 years older. Okay. So oh, so he's a bit older, yeah. We haven't talked about his <laughs> puberty have, journey. Not a, not a family discussion. Which okay. actually, maybe I'll, I'll ask him. Yeah. But I don't think anybody's was as bad as mine. I don't think anyone in history's was as bad In history's, for sure. 4'11", like, like man. Truly, yeah. Like, I had, like, baby teeth in, like, m late middle school. Wow. Like, we used to go to doctors, and they would be like, do we need therapies for this child? Will he ever go through puberty? That uh, is yeah, fascinating, yeah. Like, we used dude. to talk about, like, zinc therapy, testosterone what? therapy, and all this stuff. And, and your girls were normal all the way, like... I mean, one's, one's oh, very, like, still very young. The, yeah. Like, grown, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. They're yeah, hitting yeah, all their milestones and they're, yeah. Oh, man. I just. It's just I you. I took it's late just... to the extreme. Yeah. That's yeah. just you. Yeah, oh, like going great. to college, not fully through puberty, is not something I recommend. Insanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Insanity. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. like had a girlfriend. Like, you know, it's like, it's like, <laughs> like, what, what, what was she doing? What the hell was her problem? <laughs> what was wrong with that one? Was that the five-year one? No, that was before that. Okay. No, I had gone through puberty when she and I hooked up. Okay. okay. So that was great. Okay, that that's good. That's why it lasted five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah. So how do you feel now? How do you feel today? Uh, it's day by day. Today yeah. Today I feel great. Um, yeah. No, I feel I'm in like a pretty good place. Uh, you know, it's it's impossible to not think about it. Yeah. Like it will and I will until the day I die. Yeah. But like one thing I'm realizing too is is we're we're getting to the age where people are losing their parents. I know. Naturally. I know. You know, and I'm realizing like that super fucks you up too. Yeah. Like in my head I'm like, oh, this thing happened and like, no one will understand it. And like, granted, yes, that's I think harder than losing them in your forties or fifties or whatever. Yeah. But it they're still just gone. Yeah. It still sucks. You yeah. know, like. So and I then try you have to remind anniversaries myself. Anniversaries and birthdays. And, yeah. yeah, and yeah. so I, I really try to remind myself of that, and like the fact that I did. I was very lucky, and one thing I say in my show, and I truly mean, like, after she died, I never felt less loved in my entire life. Like my oh. dad stepped up so hard, and we fought like hell because mm -hmm. we were so similar. But like he stepped up, yeah. And I always like I'm very fortunate because I know not everyone gets that. Like I still had a very safe. Oh, place. so you never felt more loved? Yeah. Okay, got it. Uh, no, I never felt less loved after my mom died. Got it. Okay. Like there was never like a source of love missing from my life. Oh, like, my dad oh you never really felt less loved. Okay, got it, got it. And go. was like, I'm going to yes. make sure. Like he just, he took it all on. Yeah. He showed up at everything. Oh. He took time off work, like, you know, and put himself way in the, on the back burner for it. Yeah. So, especially as a dad now, like the idea 
I can't, I truly can't even, like, he, is, he just, his whole life, his whole Stopped. life blew up and he has to be like, I yeah. have to make sure these kids don't get any more fucked up than they're already going to be. Right, right. But then you also know as, like, a dad yourself, you're like, oh, that's what I would do. Yeah. 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 Because you're a good dad. I'm hoping. Thank you for doing this. Is there yeah, anything? Where, where can people follow you? Where can people find um, you? I'm, I think on all socials, I'm Guder Nachos, which is impossible to spell. Uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. G-U-D-E-R-N-A-T-C-H-O-S. And on every <laughs> national commercial. Uh, and yeah, you can see? see me on national commercials and hopefully other stuff. Yeah. Uh, someday. Yeah, and also... <laughs> Uh, bring back the show. I think you should bring back the show. Yes, and I'll hopefully be doing the one man show in a couple cities. Yeah, so. and we'll promote it on here yeah. if yeah. you can. It'll be great. Okay. Hell yeah! All right, guys. If you guys enjoyed this episode as much as I did, uh, you can follow me on at the Funny Thing Is podcast on all socials, NicoleComedy.com, and as always, follow, like, and subscribe. <laughs>